On Monday, for the first time in nearly 20 years, two rockets were fired from Judea and Samaria toward Israel. The two rockets landed inside Palestinian Authority territory, and luckily there were no casualties. Defense Minister Gallant, meanwhile, held talks today with a senior PA official in light of the recent escalation. While the rockets were very primitive and did not pose a direct threat to Israel, it does mark a very worrisome development in Judea and Samaria, as the Palestinian Authority appears to be on the brink of collapse and new terror threats backed by Iran are emerging from the area. Many voices are now calling for a wide-scale counterterrorism operation in the territories, while others are calling for ex accelerated building. And so, joining us now for more is the former head of the Military Prosecution Office for Judea and Samaria, Lieutenant Colonel Reserves, Attorney Morris Hirsch. Terrorists Hi. fired rockets toward Israel from Janine. The first time rockets were fired in Judea and Samaria in 18 years. They didn't cause damage, but it certainly seems like a troubling development, uh, isn't it? Do you think that other rockets are being produced like this, or is this a one-off? I think it's very likely that there are more rockets being produced. I think uh, and what we're seeing in the Shomron, in the northern Samaria, is a complete lack of PA intervention or PA control, maybe. Um, this started, if you remember, two years ago when, when the, the, the initial Lions Den forces um, terrorist group popped up. It was spurred on by the Palestinian Authority, spurred on by Mahmoud Abbas. And now they just seem to have lost control. Mm -hmm. If you remember also the arrest of, of, of Saadi, uh, the, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad terrorist, who the Shabak then linked to the intervention mm -hmm. of Iran. We're seeing really a massive picture of Iran intervening more and more definitely in the northern in northern Samaria and, and really the, the loss of control, almost total control of the Palestinian Authority. At this point, I would think that it's probably even in the interest of the Palestinian Authority that Israeli forces be allowed into Jenin, into Shechem, into that whole area in order to get rid of these terror cells. I want to take you in a little bit different direction as a former prosecutor. Jewish vigilantes have been attacking Arab homes and cars and other property. The top security leadership is calling the action nationalistically motivated terrorism. Are those vigilantes terrorists? And if so, why aren't they being round up? There, there, there have been so few arrests. I think that there's, it's, there's no question or shadow of a doubt that the Israeli citizens who take the law in, into their own hands and indiscriminately attack Palestinians could possibly and should well rightly be uh, defined as terrorists, and they should be arrested, and Israel should really uh, uh, prosecute them to the full extent of the law. I don't think anyone has any question about that. The difference that we're seeing is that, on one hand, you have a group of people, terrorists who are either sponsored by the Palestinian Authority, motivated by the Palestinian Authority, even initially and have now lost control, and the Palestinian Authority doing nothing about them. They're not out there on the streets arresting the, the, the terrorists. They're not out there on the streets intervening and, uh, and, and really cutting off that Iranian support, which is something that on the Israeli side, it may take wh a, a while, but eventually we will see the arrest of these Israeli vigilantes, um, and they will uh, be prosecuted. Colonel, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you very much, Adam.